Aloha, happy gardeners. Welcome to the Hawaii Urban Gardener. I'm Misty and um, I'm going to address some questions or requests that people have been asking. They were interested in the Crap Key hydroponics buckets that I showed in my first video of my garden tour. And I've been doing them um, ever since I kind of discovered and stumbled upon the method. Um, the reason being is one, a positive is I've been buying a lot of potting soil just to put it in my different containers. Um, and with this method, you just use water and you don't need to buy potting soil. Sometimes it's hard to find when there's shortages. Sometimes I've been to Home Depot and all they had was garden soil lately. And um, when you go to Lowe's in Waikele, they had not so much of a choice of potting soil. So it can get expensive, obviously. And a lot of it, if you're doing five gallon buckets or five gallon pots, you would need to buy a lot of potting mix. So. With this method, you'll save a lot of money and uh, the nutrients you buy are not that expensive and last quite a while. So I'm gonna show you how to do uh, watermelon cuttings in a um, storage bin. So you can also use five gallon buckets from wherever you can find them. It just needs a lid or you can buy a storage bin from either Walmart or Lowe's. And usually you can use whatever size you want, but the bigger the better, as the roots get more square footage to spread and kind of breathe. So this one, I'm gonna show you how to put two uh, plants in one storage bin. But before we uh, get into that, I'll show you more examples in how well my plants are doing in some of the cracky buckets. So you can kind of see how the process goes and it's not so bad and also show you some of the fertilizing nutrients I use. So just as a little update this is my um, cucumber plant that I showed you in the first video and as you can see it has really grown crazy like a weed and we've got little cucumbers here popping up all over the place. There's one down there if you can see it. Not sure if you can. There it is. And that's the Kajiri melon over there. So everything is growing really well. And like I showed in the other video, this one's roots are huge, but it's just water. Let's see if I can open it, but yeah, just water and very little nutrients. And it's amazing how it just flourishes without dirt. This is a purple bumblebee tomato. I think I showed it to you in its little dirt pot. It's a seedling pot and it has grown very tall. This is a cherry tomato. And the funny thing is when you do do this and you start to look at your roots and open up the case, you'll smell the water. It actually smells exactly like the plant. So this smells like tomato, like the leaves of the tomato, that skunky smell that some people don't like, but I actually really like that smell. And if you go to the cucumber or watermelon, it smells like the rind of a watermelon or smells like cucumbers. Very interesting. And for the last one, this is the uh, chocolate striped tomato I showed you in the first video as well. You can see the difference. It is much bigger. The only problem is it got really windy this week. So I have to put my little gnome against here so it won't tip over. It just uh, won't stay with wind. So maybe I'm thinking of drilling some holes here and putting some zip ties so it doesn't blow over. But this one's got Tons of flowers showing up on it. They're really big flowers, so hopefully some big tomatoes will come in. So what you're gonna do here is get a, this is a three inch drill bit. So it's perfect for these um, net cups right here. So what you're gonna need are some three inch net pots. You can get two inch or you, if you want, five inches they make. But I use three because I have a three inch circular drill bit and it is perfect to drill into the lids of the Tupperware and it'll fit right in and hang. So we'll go to drilling. I'm thinking I'm going to put one of my plants at the end and the other at the other end. So I'm going to drill right that way. <laughs> So as you can see, sometimes it gets caught and you have to do it in reverse and it makes the perfect hole. I'm gonna make one more on this side, um, but as you can see, these cups fit right in perfectly and they hang and they're not gonna fall through. 
And if you need to check on your roots or fix something, you can just easily take them out. All right, so today I'm going to be planting in my little crack key um, hydroponic system two of the Moon and Stars watermelon. If you've never heard of it, it's a very pretty watermelon that comes out with little um, speckles of yellow on a very dark green uh, drop back. And it looks like little stars and a big circular um, yellow spot as well on each melon, which represents the moon. And as you can see on each leaf on this one, you already kind of see some of the yellow speckling. Looks like disease, but it's part of the plant. So it also has really pretty leaves. Two of them sprouted out, so I'm going to put two of them in. So I've got two of my plants. I emptied them out of their little cells and rinsed their roots as best as I could without damaging them and got out as much dirt as I could. Now we're going to use some um, what's called rock wool. You can get this at most garden centers and if you can't find it, it's at Amazon. It's pretty much woven minerals or rocks and it's almost like those old styrofoamy things that you used to uh, do plant arrangements, flower arrangements. But basically this rock will, will fill up and hold your roots in the water and that's going to kind of be its makeshift soil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get scissors and just cut the rock wool in half. I'm going to get the roots and open it up and just stick it between and just sandwich it right in the middle. And that's going to hold it in place. And it's okay to have roots hanging out. You actually want them hanging and I'm going to put it in the cup. Sometimes you have these little um, logos or whatnot blocking the middle. So I just cut it away with some scissors. That way you can put the roots right inside gently without damaging them because you want them to hang so that they can reach the water like so. So I put my water in the bin and my nutrients. Just follow the directions, whatever nutrients you're having, and don't fill it all the way to the top. I also drilled a hole right on the top where the roots end so that if it rains, the bucket does not overflow and drown the roots. So there you have it. This is our little Kratky hydroponic system with a five gallon bucket. You can do a 10 or 20. You can buy the same ones at Lowe's or I've seen that the same thing at Sam's Club or Home Depot with this yellow top. You can go with something cheaper, but um, it's recommended to get something non clear because you don't want algae growing in it and then it's going to form bacteria and the algae will compete with your plant's roots. So you want something dark so this is perfect because it's got the black base and um, they look good so far sitting in there and hopefully they grow. So if you're wondering what I put inside is I filled up as you can see the roots are touching so it's dripping but in this uh, five gallon storage bin, I put some of the nutrients in here. It didn't go all the way up to five gallons because you don't want it to totally drown your roots. You want like a little bit of space between the water and the roots so that it has air to breathe. All right, so I have it on the side of my house here, as you can see. And it's gonna have a lot of sun from the east in the morning. And right here is my uh, tigger melon. So I got the trellis up. This one um, for watermelon, I'm gonna let it go on the ground. Uh, hopefully it works out and I'll give you some updates on how it grows. And we'll come back to it a couple weeks later. Well, it's been about two weeks since I did the hydroponic crack system for the Moon and Stars watermelon. As you can see, there's some tendrils forming over here too. And this one's growing really well. This one, not so much. It might have gotten a little bit of nitrogen burn, but the roots are pretty okay. Grew a lot and so did this one. You can see, look at that, beautiful roots all in there. And I have not changed the water or did anything with the water. And it's starting to have some buds for some flowers. 
Although they don't look like they're female flowers yet. It's too young. But we'll come and check in a couple weeks later and see how it does. All right, I'm back with an update for the Moon and Stars watermelon. Um, this one, within a week, just sprouted and started growing like crazy. So um, it's now laying here. It was on the trellis, but it was taking over my tigger melon, so I put it on the ground. Um, we've got, so far, where is it? Oh, there it is. One melon here. You can tell it's a female flower because of the melon right here. That's the watermelon. Not sure if I'm going to make any more fruit from this little plant because I don't want all the energy to be on a bunch of fruits and they all come out small. I'd rather have just two or one big nice fruit from this plant. This one's still kind of stunted. Um, I think it's because this one uh, grew faster and this was a runt as a seedling anyway. And if you can see the roots are totally clogging and balling up. I can't even lift them out. And um, this one doesn't. I mean it's got okay roots but if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's the other roots are taking over this one's space so I think that's why it's going to be stunted. But I'll just keep letting it go to see how it does or if it even flowers and I think next time I won't put two watermelons together in this Kratky hydroponic system because one or the other is going to be stronger and take over the water with its roots and choke out the other. Um, so we'll come back and see how the watermelon turns out. Also, I want to mention that um, I do take a shower and change my clothes. So if you do watch my Food Fiend, which is my other food channel for Hawaii, I usually wear the same shirt in most videos because I film them the same day because it's my day off. So it's quite all right. I don't stink, I think. Okay. <laughs> so one of the um, popular ones is General Hydroponics. You can find this off Amazon. I have not seen this in any store like Lowe's or Home Depot or anywhere in Hawaii that sells this. Um, if you do, uh, put it down in the comments, but it's pretty cheap on Amazon. If you got Prime, it shouldn't be a problem with shipping. And this is a good starter because it's got a 2, 1, 6 NPK ratio. And if you don't know what NPK is for fertilizer, uh, the N is nitrogen, that is phosphate and potassium. So 2% nitrogen, 1 is the number for the uh, phosphate and six for the potassium. The latter two are great for root growth and flowering and blooming for your veggies to pop up. Your nitrogen is what makes your plants grow strong and green at first. So as your plant grows in different stages and you want it to um, blossom with flowers so that you can get fruits and vegetables out of it, you don't want too much nitrogen anymore and you'll have to change your um, fertilizer up to something different with a higher um, phosphate and potassium level because if you just keep feeding it nitrogen it's just going to be a very healthy plant with lots of green leaves but you're not going to get any um, product out of your plant such as what you want to do is eat your vegetables and fruit so keep that in mind we'll also do another um, video on fertilizers another day Another popular one that I don't use just because it's a little bit heavy for shipping is Master Blend. Everybody uses that in hydroponics. Um, but if you can find a deal for them to ship it to you, that's great. But I don't really want a 50 pound bag of Master Blend. That's a dry uh, type of medium for hydroponics and you're going to have to mix it in the water. And I'm not into that. I'd rather have liquids. Um, one that I use and that I'm going to use in this video is Envy. I'm not really going to show you how to mix it. We'll do it on another um, video, but pretty much the instructions are in the back and it's just um, like one tablespoon. Sometimes it's one and a half, depends if you're just generally feeding them, but if you're starting it off, two tablespoons per gallon. So you're only using very little of this product. That's why the bottles are small. So as you can see, um, for this, I've had it for a while. I've done all my buckets mostly with this. And look how much I only used, because I actually use a little baby medicine dispenser that you can get at Long's or CVS. 
and that's what I use to measure the actual teaspoons. And you're not using much of the nutrients at all. Mostly it's water, because you don't want to burn your plants. You don't need much. The Envy comes in two parts, because one has um, a lot of nitrogen to start it off, but you mix it together. And the other one has a lot, as you can see, the NPK is higher on the end, the potassium and the phosphate because this is the part where you want your um, flowers to pop up. So that's why it's a part A and B. You can get this off Amazon as well. All of it's pretty cheap. Um, the General Hydroponics was about $11. Sometimes the price goes up or down. This comes in a pack. You can't buy it separate and you can get the powdered form as well, but I'd rather just use liquid. It's easier to mix. This together I believe was $14, so not bad. And if I'm using my General Hydroponics because it's got a pretty balanced uh, NPK, once I want my flowers to bloom, if I use that product, I use Fox Farms Tiger Bloom. And this, as you can see, has a lower nitrogen, but very high phosphate and potassium level. And that's what makes it bloom. All right, surprise, surprise. Um, stupid me, I kind of noticed that the leaves were different on this one and this one, and I was wondering why this one wasn't growing as big. This is my watermelon. This is an update. It's been uh, about maybe two weeks, and this one's flourishing really well. But after I saw the flowers, and I was like, why is there flowers and this one doesn't really grow? And this one has the moon and stars signature yellow spots, and this didn't. And obviously the shape's different of the leaves, and I can tell. I mixed up the seeds in the seedling tray, and this is a cucumber, and it is doing well. Look at those little cucumbers. I pollinated this today, and we have another one over here, if I can find it. Where did it go? There it is, at the end. Look at that. A little cucumber. So this is another Wisconsin pickling cucumber. I guess I got the seeds mixed up. They do not look like watermelon seeds, but I don't know. I guess I messed up, but that's okay. This one does have a little flower here. So even though it's um, smaller, it's got some tendrils over there and one over here. So hopefully the cucumber doesn't um, choke it out because look at that the root bowl I can't even get it out of the hole now and this one is smaller and you can see all the roots from the cucumber just taking over but it still looks healthy the roots are good so we'll come back and see if we get any cucumbers on this plant and see how this is going to be doing in a couple of weeks. So this is the final product. As you can see, the Moon and Stars Watermelon, it's actually doing okay, but I think the cucumber grows much quicker. This one's starting to have uh, flowers on it, so it's uh, gonna have some watermelon soon. Maybe in another video I'll show you if it does produce one, but um, inside it is doing well continuing to do well. The cucumber, like the other cucumber, starts to take over and I can't even pull it out. It is very heavy. But look at what we got here. We got this big cucumber. I don't want to break it because it's not ready. Maybe a couple more days, but cucumbers coming out. It's a big one. Got some here, some here. And in another video, I'll show you how to hand pollinate. Got some here. There's some more somewhere over there, but here's another big one on the ground. Cucumber and another one. So yes, you can do this Kratky hydroponics and it's very successful. You don't have to buy any dirt. So I hope that helped you understand how to do a crack key system. Um, anybody can do it, super easy. It's not brain surgery. Just go get yourself a bucket with a lid at Home Depot or Lowe's, or if you can find one for free at a bakery and such, or you have a bucket lying around somewhere, or even a storage bin, as long as it's gonna close tightly on the lid, 
you can make it. You get that three inch drill bit. You can find it at any hardware store or Amazon. And it's super simple with the net cups. Um, the inside medium will be rock wool. You can find that on Amazon as well if you can't find it at your garden center. Um, but usually all these things are pretty cheap. You get a lot of rock wool and you can plant lots of plants and you only need like a little inch cube and that thing's probably like $10 and you can plant multiple plants with them and you can reuse them usually. Yeah, so save money on potting mix. You don't have to be buying that and it doesn't get your hands dirty. And the great thing is all these buckets I have not refilled once except the cucumber in the Lowe's bucket. Um, that one just got a little bit low and I just put a little bit of water in there, but it's been over, I want to say four weeks in that bucket for that cucumber that I had to refill. And I haven't really had to water anything and it's kind of like low maintenance, but you get vegetables out of it. So I'm not going to quit using dirt. Some things I would like to use potting mix and dirt in, but on the most part, I think this is a pretty successful way to grow vegetables in your smaller space. And I'm going to be continuing to do it because it's super easy. And I think when you stack them in a row, it can be more organized in a smaller space or garden. So if you found this helpful and informative, please press the like button and subscribe if you're new. And if you have any other questions that are more specific to this, you can put it in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And I'll see you again next week. Aloha.